57 is just a whole different level. I always had in the back of my mind that 57 Chevy, 57, 56, or 55 would be nice. So I'm Corey, better known as C. They know me from my 71 Chevy Impala. So uh, that was one of my most recent builds. Um, sold that car, so now I'm off to the 57 Chevy games. This is a whole nother, nother league for me. I've been building dunks actually since high school. So I'm like 41 right now. So I started out with a box Chevy, four door. So I'll put together a box Chevy um, from the paint, from the rims. And you know, that's something I drove to school, 11th, 12th grade. Um, after the box Chevy, I uh, got my first 71 hard top. So put that together as well you know full paint interior engine work um, everything so enjoyed that as well um, from the 71 hardtop I ended up purchasing a 74 so the 74 was a, pretty much a rust bucket so I had to really really get, get involved in that one um, metal work paint work top interior um, but it was fun, so I enjoy I enjoyed more so putting it together than when it was done. Um, after the 74, I said that was it, I wasn't gonna do it anymore, and ended up finding a very clean 71. Um, so invested in that, took my time, built it, uh, did the same thing, top interior, motor work. I didn't have to go too much deep into the uh, body work because it was a relatively clean car. Um, you know, built it to my satisfaction. Um, then wanted to challenge myself a little bit. So stuck an LS motor in it. That was fun, it was cool. It wasn't enough, needed a little bit more power. So challenged myself again, see if I could put a supercharger in it and you know, how would that work out? So got together with Hot Rod D, put together a nice combination. And to this day, that car, that car runs like you know, like it's off the showroom. After doing all that, I feel like I, I reached the pinnacle. It wasn't nothing else I could do to the car. You know, if I start investing again and redoing stuff, repainting it, doing the interior over, then I'm in it for more than what the car can actually sell for, what it was worth. So it made no sense to me. So it was best that, you know, once I reached that point, let me sell it, let somebody else enjoy it, and let me challenge myself again. So sold that and kind of sat down for a minute I always had in the back of my mind, man, 57 Chevy, 57, 56, or 55 would be nice. But the 57s always stuck out to me. Um, 
I always felt like it was something that was unattainable for me. It was out of my out of my weight class. Um, you know, most uh, white people owned them, and it was very very expensive. And so I said, man, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Challenge myself. So I went looking on the internet, looked around, um, found, kept seeing this one particular car, but it was priced very high. It was in uh, Canada. I said, man, you know, I don't want to spend that much. Kept seeing it, kept seeing it. Then I noticed it had uh, a best offer attached to it. So I said, man, let me shoot the guy a number, see if it'll work out. So I ended up shooting the guy a number. He accepted my offer. I was surprised and, you know, the rest is history. Got it down from Canada. Um, actually, uh, had my boy in Canada go take a look for me because usually I fly out and fly out and go take a look at it. But uh, we was in the midst of a pandemic, so I couldn't get out. So I uh, had my boy Caprice King. Shout out to Caprice King. Go check it out for me. He checked it out. Told me it was all good. From there, the rest was history, man. The car is here. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And you know, it is what it is. It's a different class, very different class. When you look at the Chevy Bel Air, man, you look at the front of the car, the chrome trim, the chrome going down the sides, you know, everything is beautiful. You know, everywhere you go, you know, you get the props, you get the thumbs up from everybody, white, black, Hispanic, doesn't matter. From the old to the young, to the, no matter the race, no matter, it's, it's everywhere. With the dunk game, you know, you got that same love, but also, you know, how can I say it? Stereotyped a little bit. Oh, he, you know, he's this, he's that, you know, he's, uh. You must be selling drugs or, or something like that. The stereotype we got when, in the don't game. Again, I love the don't game. You know, nothing, take nothing away from it. But, you know, again, the 57 is just a whole different level. You know, I haven't owned a car that long, but everywhere I've driven the car, you know, people love it. I'm actually amazed on how well this car drives to be a 57 Chevy. Compare it to the don't game, but when you know, when you're putting those big wheels on it, you're going to feel something. So people are going to tell you, oh, you know, if you do the suspension, you'll get rid of that. Nah, it's, it's not true. Those big wheels bring bring something to it. And there's nothing wrong with it. Don't game, it is what it is. Especially when you go on big motor and all those different things. You know, you gotta expect a different different kind of feel of the car, but you know, it's something to get used to. But in this one, it's more like a cruiser. So I haven't decided yet what I wanna do as far as uh, motor, should I touch the car? Should I put an LS, should I put a supercharger? So I'm still at that phase right now where I'm still trying to figure it out, man, because the car is so pristine. But definitely, if you guys have any suggestion on what I should do to the car, um, to put my touches on it, like I say, the car is, you know, as pristine as it sits. Um, like I say, coming from the dunk game, I'm used to fast motors, big motors, more of a bike. And with this car, I haven't decided yet what I want to do with it. So if you guys, you know, can help me out, suggest some things what I should do should I leave it the way it is so should I go all the way in and just put my own touches to it let me know so on this particular 57 Chevy um, you know this one came with the power brakes which you don't often see um, with them it came with the smokeless ashtray so what that was basically in 1957 when you was a smoker you set your cigarette there and actually it would suck the fumes from the from the vacuum off of the engine to a little canister behind the kick panel. Also came with the tissue dispenser, uh, which is pretty uh, um, 
not rare, but you know. But how it loads it, you load it from the back, um, and you pull your tissue from the top. Spotlight mirrors was also something a little bit unique to um, certain 57 Chevys. Um, it was basically uh, an additional package you had to get added back in 1957. And basically how it works, is similar to police cars. Uh, you have your spotlights, you can control it. Um, you can turn it on, turn it off, you can adjust it out. And, and behind the spotlight is your mirror. This was also your, uh, your side mirror. So, you know, like I say pretty much everything that you can think of works on the vehicle, down to the clock and the dash. All right, so let me, let me show you what's powering this 57 Chevy, you know, for the moment. So currently right now, it's powered by a 283 um, two-speed two power glide transmission, um, all original. So from the generator to the power steering to your deluxe heater, um, it's all, all original, all original. So the next unique thing on this 57 Chevy is the Continental Kit. So again, this is something that most 57s didn't come with, your basic 57s didn't come with. This was something that had to be added on or requested uh, when you purchased the vehicle. So um, basically how it works, you got your spare tire back here, you got your nice cover, uh, pull that forward, and then you know you open up your trunk. You got your clean trunk, solid trunk. Um, uh, basically, you know, no rust holes or anything like that. Very solid, very clean car. I wish I could get you the underneath pictures, but you know, you get the point. Little do you know. The gas is basically right built right into the trim. So that's your gas gas cap and that's how you'll put gas in your car. Alright, so spend enough time with me. You rode in the 57, you got to see every part of it. You know, I appreciate you watching this video. Check me out on Instagram, C L O W 7 CLO 7 So again, appreciate it and you know, welcome to the 57 world.